Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, happy Friday, Calvary. I am glad to be back with you as we continue looking at some different big player Bible names. Um, and today we come to 1 Kings chapter 12. And you're going to come across some big names, but they might not be all that familiar to you. We're going to talk about Rehoboam, who was Solomon's son. And we're going to talk about Jeroboam, who was Solomon's enemy. And um, as we do this, I have this question for you because it's going to help you relate to the guys in this story. Uh, have you ever made a foolish choice that you regret? A foolish choice that comes back and bites you? You know, we all have. And I think we're going to identify with Rehoboam here because he makes a really foolish choice. See, Solomon has died and Rehoboam is going to take over Solomon's reign. But of course, you remember Solomon had made bad choices. He had led the people of Israel astray to follow some other gods. Even though he was this wise man, this wise king, he still made mistakes. And uh, as a result of those mistakes, God had promised to take the kingdom out of Solomon's hand and to divide that kingdom. So his son Rehoboam becomes king and Jeroboam, one of Solomon's enemies, comes back into the picture and leads a contingency of people to come to Rehoboam and say, hey, your father oppressed us. He was a tough uh, commander. He, he treated us like slaves. We don't want that treatment anymore. And Rehoboam hears this complaint and he tells them to go away for three days. And uh, then Rehoboam goes and he consults some counselors. First, he goes to some of the older men who had been counselors for Solomon, his father. And those older counselors said, you need to listen to the people. You need to lighten their burden. Listen to them and they're going to be faithful to you. They're going to follow you. Well, then Rehoboam goes to some of the younger guys, maybe the guys that he grew up with. And they said, no way. He's like, they, they say, just oppress these people. You show them that you're more powerful and you're tougher than Solomon. So uh, he listens to those two councils. And then three days later, Jeroboam brings back the people of Israel to find out what the king's decision is. And uh, you will see that he listened to the bad counsel here. Listen to what Rehoboam tells him. Uh, this is uh, verse 14 in 1 Kings 12. Rehoboam says, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken by Ahijah the Shilonite and to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So, um, got to get all these names straight. Rehoboam listens to bad counsel. And in the process of doing this, he fulfills the promise that was made to Jeroboam, that Jeroboam would rule in Israel and that the kingdom would be divided because of Solomon's sin. So he's listening to this bad counsel. And of course, exactly what God promised happens. The kingdom is divided. Jeroboam takes 10 of the tribes and they decide to follow him and to split off from David's family and to split off from Solomon. And so Rehoboam is left just with the tribe of Judah to follow him. So we have this split in the kingdom and uh, Rehoboam decides that he is going to go to war against Jeroboam and the Israelites that had left. So he gets a group of people, they're ready to go to war, and then he gets interrupted. But the word of the Lord, this is verse 22, but the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and all the house of Judah and Benjamin and the rest of the people, thus says the Lord, you shall not go up or fight against your relatives, the people of Israel. Every man return to his home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord and went home again according to the word of the Lord. So instead of uh, ignoring correct counsel, this time Rehoboam listens. He does not go to war against Jeroboam and the other tribes in Israel. 
what is the fruit of this foolish choice that Rehoboam made? One, the kingdom is divided. And then two, Jeroboam, who's ruling the other 10 tribes, decides to make two golden calves for the Israelites to worship again. He doesn't want them going to the temple that Solomon built in the tribe of Judah. So he creates a false religion there in Israel. The fruit of that one choice leads to the downfall of so many people. So let me encourage you today. Listen to good counsel. When you have a choice to make, choose to listen to people with experience and with a few years of knowledge built up because they might be able to steer you the right way. And of course, compare any kind of counsel that you get with God's word to see if it matches. And then remember, when you make those foolish choices that sting and that you wish you could redo, God can redeem. God can redeem that foolish choice. He can change it. We're not going to see that redemption in this story of Israel for centuries. I mean, centuries until there's redemption for Israel here. But still, God can redeem those bad choices. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. See, we all have some things that we regret from our past. We've all made choices that we know are foolish, we know are sinful, and that is the good news of Jesus, that he died on the cross, he rose again, so that he can redeem that bad choice, so he can make something good out of the mess that we've made in our life. And I hope that encourages you today. And I wanna encourage you also, this weekend, it's Friday, so this weekend, come and worship with us at one of our campuses you're gonna hear more ways to live wisely, to choose wisely, and to let Jesus redeem whatever bad choices you've made in your life. Have a blessed week in Calvary.